forecast for tonight is calling for the 12 inches of snow. The storm of the century. There's hurricane force winds. Hazards just super extreme. Makes Alaskan roads a death trap. Oh. They lost contact with the complainants. It sounds like there's injuries. And the skies just as deadly. If we get the freezing rain in here, the aircraft will start icing up, and that's when we're going to have serious problems. Every situation has the potential of being really bad. Part of this job is just to survive. From wild animals on edge. Yes, yeah, so that's like the worst case scenario. I don't even want to get near that most. To calls gone sideways. I'd like to have you transported. Even in the harshest conditions. He's in running in the back coop. We know you're here. The Alaska State Troopers still uphold the law. State Trooper, you might as well come on out. We got you surrounded. Come on out. He's running around back coop. It is being called one of the worst storms in decades. Residents are preparing for coastal floods and high winds that are hitting communities right now. Today, sitting just off the coast is a massive storm. 70 mile an hour plus winds, seas up to 25 feet in Bering Sea. And it has western Alaska in its sights. But it can't slow down Sergeant Ted Nordgarten. We're flying to Kitnik, Alaska, a coastal village to the south. The local clinic has burglarized. There's some evidence, body fluids discovered inside the clinic. So I got to get it on the way to the laboratory. Right. We're flying into some pretty ugly weather, and we need to be prepared for that to hit the ground, take care of what we need to, and get back out as fast as we can, because it is headed this way. the officer on the ground he said the winds are picking up weather prediction is a guess at best so we may get there and have to turn around because of what he's encountering flying in yeah that comes and we're in big trouble i'll be watching for precipitation and someone in and the wind once it starts to get up to 25 to 30 that's an indicator that you probably want to get out of there Small aircraft crashes are one of the leading causes of death for Alaska's troopers. After a bumpy 45-minute flight, they land safely in the village of Kipnuk. Storm of the century? It is? It can develop fast enough that we have to stay on the ground, and that could last a day, that could last a week. With no time to waste, Nordgarten heads straight to the scene of the crime. You found a syringe. Did you find it? Yes. Where did you find it? On the ceiling up here. There's sound markings. Like he was going to cut through the ceiling there? Yeah. He broke through the ceiling and then actually had some kind of a saw cut his way into the medical storage. One thing that was found up there was a syringe, and it appears the suspect used it to inject himself with something he got out of the pharmacy. Nordgarten begins his investigation, but he's racing the clock. So I'm waiting for the phone to ring for Earl to say, time to go to Indy. Let me see something here. All right. The person that was up here touched a black PVC pipe in quite a few spots but it's already covered with a super thick coating of dust. There's smudges everywhere. There's no clear fingerprint. Actually, there's a handprint over here. I may be able to use a little powder. anything I, it looked like a real good handprint so it could be like what I'm wearing like a glove it looks like a handprint but there's no fingerprints inside he's hopeful the syringe will be enough to ID the suspect 
and send it to the lab and see if they can't extract what appears to be blood inside there and then run it through the DNA database. With the storm fast approaching, okay. Norgarden's got to go. Hey, Earl, there's more wind. The storm is just coming in. We've gone from 50 mile an hour winds, now we're gusting up to over 26. So we've got the winds that are pushing borderline for us to get out of here. So we're loading up and ready to get out of here right now. If we get the freezing rain in here, the aircraft will start icing up, and that's when we're going to have serious problems. 6705 with the taxi now. Departure. they touch down, the weather intensifies. The storms arrived. But back at Bethel Post, freezing temperatures and hurricane force winds don't stop the calls from coming in. We're going to Oscarville. It's uh, three to five miles down river from Bethel. We're going to investigate a family disturbance. Right now they're calling for 40, 45 knot winds, so do some visibility. Blizzard conditions, basically. Oh yeah, you get moving. down the trail today and try and go around those obstacles to get to the village so it's gonna be slow traveling very easy to get turned around the weather really turns bad we can't see anything we brought the sleeping bags some extra warm clothes shovel just gotta always be ready be prepared to stay in the weather we don't always have the option of backing out of it so but when they reach the frozen river the storm's broken up their ice road. We're going to go back and pick a different road. Okay. Trooper Mooring's snow machine is stuck, and the blizzard's intensifying with wind gusts up to 90 miles per hour. their snow machines, they'll be forced to spend the night in these deadly conditions. Visibility is limited, and their only way out is to follow their tracks back to post. We're always prepared for the weather. However, it is such a factor that we can't control. It's hard to say what can happen. After a tense half-hour trek, they arrive safely back in Bethel to wait for better conditions.
over 400 miles east. The deep freeze hits the Matsu Valley. And the troopers here face a whole new set of challenges. As far as the summertime, we don't see a lot of moose down on the roadways because they have enough source of food. But when we get a huge amount of snow, and moose like to come down to the roadways. Vehicles hitting moose out here in the Matsu Valley happens quite frequently. About 300 on average get hit a year just in this area alone. Get out of here, moose! Tough roll throw. Now we're headed to a report that a female moose and two calves have appeared to have been hit by a vehicle. They look like they're big, dumb, slow animals, but they're definitely not. That moose will do some damage to me if, if it gets older, especially with two babies. They're very protective of their young. It's right here. It's right through the trees there. That is kind of odd that they're just hanging out. I can't ask the moose, hey, are you okay? Oh, she good? Um, looks like she stood up. Back in 18, I got the moose call. All three are 1060. They've gotten up and walked into the woods. That was the best case scenario. The moose are good to go. I don't have to walk up to them and make sure that they're not hit. But also, I don't feel comfortable nor safe doing so. But not every call's this easy in the extreme winter weather. Happy at 1050 with the This is locked. Definitely. The baby moose has been hit, and then we have the mom in the area watching. This is the worst case scenario, because the mom is just super spun up. So there's all these people around her baby, and they may become super aggressive. We've had a couple charged troopers. And there's the moose right there. It's probably the mother moose. Yeah, so that's like the worst case scenario, that the mother moose is right here. It's obviously wanting to help. This moose has two broken legs and won't be able to survive on its own. Cooper must dispatch it. Both its legs are broken. See, the mom's hanging around. You see the colic on the moose standing on the back there? Have you seen a dog when it gets upset? Pretty much the same thing. I don't even want to get near that moose. but we'll have to dispatch the moose here. Mom is not going to be thrilled. Moose! I think it's not leaving the, the baby. So I don't want to have happen is obviously be forced to shoot the other when the other sees the baby get hurt here. So we'll probably take the moose right now then. Cooper calls a local charity to collect the meat. The most humane thing to do is to dispatch the moose. It's unfortunate, but it does happen out here. One hundred twenty miles to the east, the freezing temperatures take hold over Alaska's rural villages and make patrolling extra challenging. I'm just looking for any kind of activity that's going on, um, anything unusual or suspicious, I definitely look into it. Village Public Safety Officer Jody Potts is responsible for four villages surrounding Glen Allen. It's a large patrol area and one she knows well. I'm policing my own people. I'm one of them. I understand their culture, background, um, you know, the taboos and, and just kind of the lifestyle. I grew up seeing a lot of the stuff that I end up policing. 
people in this area know that I'm here for business and um, I have a lot less friends now. <laughs> Back up to be days away and we don't have a fire. Um, we get a vest, but no good. <laughs> we get shot at, but we can't shoot anyone. <laughs> Today, she's patrolling the village of Copper Center, home to fewer than 400 people. It's usually pretty quiet. Definitely a lot more things happen at night. This is Jody. It's not long before she receives a disturbing tip. Really? Okay. I'm on my way down there. All right, bye. This guy, the complainant, told me to check on someone. And uh, I asked him, you know, like, is she okay? What's, why do you want me to check on her? And he said, oh, you'll see. I feel nervous. You almost never know going into anything. Um, but especially when you get little reports like that, like, definitely, you don't know what you're going into. Looks like someone else is there in the house with her. I don't know who. We'll see what's going on. And come in. Hi. What's wrong with your face? Can I get you some medical assistance or? I'm fine. Really? They don't look fine. What happened? Are you okay? Yes. Did that happen recently? It's fine, I said, Jody. Everything's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. You want to come outside and talk to me? I want to. Can I talk to you outside? Sure. Okay. Good. Hmm. Hey. So? So, she's hurt, but she doesn't want help, so, you know. I don't know what to say. I don't either. Do you know anything? Any information you want to share? I uh, shared about the amount of information I feel comfortable sharing. So. Okay. But you know more, huh? You just don't want to say anything. Come on. Talk to you later. Come on. Yeah. See you guys. She's got some serious injuries to her face. The two guys that were there. Did, you know, didn't want to say anything. They know what happened. One of them could have been the suspect in this case. Maybe she's not ready to talk because they're still there. Potts heads back to post. This is Jody. But she soon gets a concerned call from the woman's friend. Okay, what time was that? The woman and the two men are nowhere to be found. Okay, I'll be there in just a few. All right, bye. A little more information about the guys that were at the house. They told me that one of the guys just got out of prison. He served four years. As village public safety officer, Potts can't carry a gun. So she heads back to the house alone and unarmed. I have uh, my taser actually semi-ready. Nervous. I have three babies to go home to, and these guys are dangerous. So, yeah, I'm concerned. That's his house. She's not home, no one's around. He just got up. I can just see one guy. I can't see her. There's nothing more she can do tonight. These intoxicated people who have a violent criminal history need to just stay sleeping tonight. You just feel like your hands are tied behind your back, and, um, and that's where you just have to, in this job, you got to learn patience. You win some, you lose some. Back in the Matsu Valley. Back in the Matsu Valley. Weather being 10 below, plus there's a bit of a wind blowing. Uh, wind chill factors are really high, especially you get out here on these rural roads where people start maybe driving a little too quickly, don't see the corners coming, miss the roadway. 30, 30, 30.
Uh, we came to back up another trooper. There's a vehicle that spun around on the roadway first and spun around into the ditch. And first the driver may be intoxicated. On scene, trooper Amy Bowen is questioning the driver. What happened? Oh, I turned around. I slid off the road. Is it registered to you? No, no, ma'am. Okay, where's your driver's license at? Oh, it's actually um, suspended. Out of Alaska? No, I'm suspended out of Oregon. Out of Oregon. Sorry, that means you're suspended everywhere, right? Yeah, it does. With no identification, Wraith runs the name the man gives the troopers. 10 I don't think it's him. The person who he's saying he is doesn't exist. It's only because I got something else that they're trying to hide. How much have you had to drink tonight? I had a beer at the local bar down the road there and I was just headed home. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being like barely buzzed right now and 10 being the most intoxicated you've ever been, what would you say you are right now? Honestly? Yeah. It's like a 5. I'm going to go with a 5? Yeah. Bowen runs the man through field sobriety tests. Can I have you count backwards, starting at 69 and going back to 54? 69 to J, 67. Hold on, that's our one. 69 to J, 67, 66, 65, 4, 6, 4. Ooh, that's our one. Yes, you can. Oh, no, I just did. Okay. <laughs> I thought that we were done with that. I thought I fell down. So we're going to use an imaginary line, okay? I can't do that with these boots on at all. You want to give it your best try? Can we just skip it and do the breathalyzer or whatever? No, I think I can it. pop under OA. I guarantee it. I had one beer. You know, we're putting a lot of work into this. Okay. <laughs> oh, you okay. Yeah. No, you don't. No, yeah, yeah, we do. So we're going to walk to your car, doing the heel to toe. We're going to step and walk around, touching a foot. And then we're going to come back. And then what are we going to do after that, right, donkey? <laughs> they give him a breathalyzer. There you go. 136. They arrest him for DUI, but still don't know his identity. So do they find a positive ID on him? No. But as they take him away, troopers make a crucial discovery. I'm sorry about that. Why not? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, he's got three warrants for the arrest ones. The only warrant is the driver's license is revoked. No, tonight he was driving to UI, so good give up though. In Alaska, crime doesn't slow down for weather. Mr. Mirror 500. It's kind of an all natural. Even the storm of the century. This one's got a contempt. Escape 2, no bill. At the MATCOM dispatch center, Trooper Abraham Garcia is taking down a list of warrant suspects to bring to justice. I don't think anybody's even trying to get him yet. All right, I'll head up, Billy. But before he can hunt down his top suspect... Hello, 911 said he needed ambulance rescue for a four-wheeler accident. Okay, um, 1019. EMS 1019. It sounds like there's injuries. It sounds like a four-wheeler accident. They lost contact with the complainants. At this point, that's all we have. Looks like EMS is right in front of us. have internal injuries, which could be fatal if not examined. You look really injured. I mean, as, might as well just let them check you, at least in the ambulance, just to make sure you're fine. I told them not even to call nobody. I told them how to I just, I mean, you all right? It would be really unfortunate for you to die at home because you didn't get checked out at the hospital. But, I don't, I just, I don't want to. Do you want to warm up in the ambulance while we, uh... I'm not really cold. I can't finish my... If you don't want to go to the hospital, I respect that. But my concern is make sure she makes it home. So I'm not going to let you drive with her in the back the way you are right now, okay? So make sure you guys keep an eye on her. And if anything changes, make sure she goes to the hospital. She's, did you get home, Mommy? Is she coming up here? What day of the week is it? It's uh, today, Saturday. Uh, and unfortunately, Obama. Well, you understand the rest of your taping could be fatal? Yes, I do. Okay. 
just actually bought this machine today. <laughs> having a little bit of <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still paying for you. I'm still going to pay you for the machine, guy. <laughs> if you see this. <laughs> the man's wife arrives to transport their daughter. Any questions? Yeah, I'll call you in a few years for this DB that's going to happen. <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> uh, Across the valley, temperatures continue to drop near zero. Back on 143Q, 1090s is closing description. And even criminals scramble to get in from the cold. We got something I've actually only run into a couple times. The guy just called dispatch to say that he's got an outstanding warrant and he wants to be arrested on it. It's really cold, it's about zero degrees out. So it sounds like he's walking on foot in a sweatshirt and other jeans or pajama pants. He just doesn't want to walk around in the cold anymore. So, something like this, though, even though he's saying that, it's strange enough that you're going to remain on your toes. This is a guy who's got a warrant out for his arrest, and we're going to treat him just the same as if we went to his house to try and find him or got him on a traffic stop. But suddenly, Cronin gets dispatched to a very different weather-related call. 23 complaints reporting Luce is still alive, and there's a white car that's blocking the road. 1419. We're heading to a uh, motor vehicle collision involving a uh, moose single vehicle. Um, Unfortunately, it's kind of something that we get pretty often here in the winter. It's on the roadway definitely makes it hard to slow down, and it doesn't help that it's dark out right now. There are a lot of other vehicles on the road because it's kind of rush hour, and then you've got a dark animal running across the road. You're not going to see it until the last second, and when you hit the brakes, it's just going to end up sliding for a while. How's it going? You the one in the collision? Yeah. Okay. Moose. Where's the moose at? Okay. You all right? I'm fine. Not hurt? How's the damage to your vehicle? All right. Yeah. yeah, that's actually uh, not too terrible. It could have been worse. Yeah, he started walking up. And I think he started heading off that way. Okay. I'm quite sure where he is. Cronin must work quickly to catch up to the moose. If it's severely injured, he'll need to put it down. Hopefully it's all right. Back on one before three, I'll be out on foot attempting to locate the moose. You can see it seems to be moving pretty good. You can see its tracks all through here. Generally, if they're up and about, they look at your flashlight, so you can see the reflection in their eyes. But I don't think we're going to find it. That's not it. Yeah, I'm going to have to call it. There it is. Yeah, it's moving pretty good. I'm not going to force the issue. If it's up walking around on all fours, there's no reason for us to go put it down, so we're going to let him go off and continue being a moose. With man and beast both safe, Cronin follows up on the warrant arrest. The subject says he wants to meet and uh, get arrested on his warrant. It's his right to do. I don't see him yet. There he is. Back on 1B43, 1023. You all right? Just a little cold? Okay. I appreciate you being so cooperative. I'll get you here uh, somewhere a little warmer here in a second. He's doing the right thing, getting it taken care of. We're going to bring him into Metro pre-trial. Uh, give him a warm place to stay. It's a little cold out tonight. Why not? It's pointless. They're going to find you anyway. Hey, if this gets me to Hollywood, oh well. That's what it takes. I just want a copy. I'm going to send it to my mom. Hey, mom, look at this. <laughs> 230 miles north in Fairbanks. Fairbanks, 15 minutes north. This kid is in trust now. Tower. As temperatures keep dropping, tempers rise between a father and son. Sorry, as a civil problem. Apparently, the son's at the father's door now, and he's trespassing the property. You know, both kind of heated, and emotions are high. Weapons are always a concern since it's Alaska, and everybody has guns. And it's just the fact that you don't know. Reporting Kelsey is trying to steal a vehicle out of a car. The 16 passenger green van. 1623 at uh, 12.05. Van's clear. Alright, he's not in the van. He can knock on your door or yeah, just go straight to the van or what? 
he was knocking on the door and he's, he was saying, I'm cold, let me in. Okay. And I've seen him blow up at me before. Okay. He's, he's punched me, he's okay. kicked me, he's, you know. If we find him, do you want him arrested for trespassing? It's completely up to you. That's a tough call. He's my son. I you understand. Know. I understand. Yeah. No? Okay. I think that's the best. Okay. I took off on foot, so he's somewhere around here. If Hennessy can't find the son, he may freeze to death. Hey, man. How you doing? What's going on tonight? I called my dad about four or five times. He got off work. He even gave me 15 bucks on his break. Said, here you go. Here's a little bit of cash in your pocket. He won't return my call, so I can come get my one duffel bag of clothes. Okay. Why are we over at his house? I'm trying to get my clothes. Okay. You know you can't go over there, right? No. Right now you have a trespass order in effect against you over there. Which means you can't be over there. Separate your husband. There you go. The trespassing order is just going to affect my job or what? I don't know, sir. I don't have to tell you about that. That's, that's completely up to them. He asked me to move up here with him because he missed me so much. There's been a lot of what's going on there. I'm sure he'd be laughing and he'll click him when you see him there. Um, you're going to trooper post for a little bit, okay? And we'll go from there, okay, bud? So he's resting on the trespass, and then we also discovered he had a uh, domestic violence protection order out. It'll be arranged tomorrow. Reports will be set from there. Back in the Matsu Valley, the storm rages on and massive snow drifts wreak havoc on the roadways. Forecast for tonight is calling for 12 inches of snow, which we're hoping doesn't happen. We want folks that are out and about on the roadways, the 12 inches of snow will obviously hamper our response times, particularly when the road conditions are potentially as hazardous as they will be tonight. Up ahead, an erratic driver catches Cooper's eye. What's going on there? The driver was over the left hand lane, it's not a one way road. We have a lot of DUI offenses up here, and with these road conditions, the hazard is super extreme. But before he can pull him over... Oh. Oh. Hey man, how's it going? You alright? Yeah. Okay. What happened here? I don't know. Like, you, you don't know what happened? I, no, I honestly could not see that. Okay. Like, I was trying to turn it in, the ditch stuck me in. Okay, well, come on out for me. Okay, do you have your ID on your bus? How old are you? 17. 17? Any reason before that, while you were on the opposite side of the road, you were kind of... No, sir, I was, like, young man. I'm sorry. Okay, anything? I'm not on drugs, I swear to God. Okay, drink anything tonight? No, sir. Okay. Just a little anything, because I couldn't really see it. Okay, so the, view, the ditch just pretty much sucks you in? Is that what you're going for the turn because I was trying to turn around because I couldn't really see the sign so I wanted to like turn into it and you okay. know, see. Uh -huh. All right. Well, uh, you can sit back in the vehicle if you want. You stay warm. He is super nervous. Ten fifty one. Pull this vehicle out of the ditch. So here's the deal with this guy. He's driving down the road and then he's driving on this side of the road. Then we get to this point right here. You can see where he went in. Okay, yeah. And he goes into the ditch. Now, if you look at the track mark here, he says that he was making a turn onto this road. But clearly, the road is another 15 yards, 10 yards from where his vehicle is. And then he's made some statements like, man, I want to go to jail. I'm thinking in my head, what would you go to jail for if you just simply slipped and went off the road, right? There's no reason why you would go to jail. You don't arrest people for going into the ditch. All right, hop on up here. So, see him taking medications or anything like that today? Well, once you just follow your eyes, your eyes only, all right? They administer sobriety tests. Okay, man. Last one I have you do. You're gonna take a deep breath and blow into that, all right? Harder, 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 harder. All right, stop right there. Now, if you've been here long enough, then anything in your mouth residual from the toothpaste is out there, alright? Your point zero zero zero. You're not going to be placed under arrest or anything like that. The man's clear for DUI, but still gets a citation. Instead, your instructional permit, you're not supposed to be driving. How did you, why did you pass? Did you get the test? Or? I was going to take a long way to speak on this 
So you can see flashing lights. A lot of these kids, they haven't particularly driven in these conditions before. This guy has an instructional permit, and he has an instructional permit for a reason. He doesn't have the experience to be driving on the road conditions the way they were tonight. Luckily, he wasn't hurt, and uh, that'll be it. He'll learn his lesson on film. Later that night, Matt Conn, what's the house numbers on again? 21. This is the Willow Law area. We do have a lot of problems in this area. We've had a lot of drug usage. Notoriously, this is one of those neighborhoods generally end up arresting somebody for warrants. Every uh, city or whatever has an area, and this is what we call Willow Law. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, if you live here, that's what that's that's what we get out here a lot. Tonight, Chadwell's looking for a man who's eluded troopers for weeks. I don't know who actually owns this house. But uh, we're pretty positive there's a guy there that's got a felony warrant. So myself and Trooper Cooper are going to make an attempt. It's a trailblazer right here, isn't it? On oh, that dark trailblazer. Oh, that vehicle's here. He's here. Mm -hmm. Got any guns in here that we know of there? I'm not sure. Is there a bow wow in there? If you keep an eye here, I'll make contact at the door. We'll see what happens. We got you surrounded. Come on out. He's running around back, Coop. State troopers, you might as well come on out. Save us have to break down your door and get a search warrant. We know you're here. We got multiple units. What's going on? Uh, we're here to see. Ma'am, I just seen him run through your house. You know, he's got a warrant. I'm just going to ask you politely, open the door. Let's take care of this. Where's he at, ma'am? I just seen him run through here. Come on out. Okay. All right. So why don't you just get him to come over here, and that's the end of it. All right. Okay? Come on out. What's up? Oh, you got a warrant, partner. You know what the deal is. You got a warrant. Be cool. And that's the way this will end up. Fair enough? With the man in custody, a month of searching has come to an end. Original charge was for failure to uh, remand on a, on a drug charge. So it's definitely someone that we need to uh, get off our streets. It's success for all the officers that have worked on this warrant. Thanks, Coop. Yeah. The other troopers have been looking for this guy for quite some time.